What's up, everybody? Coming to you live-ish, not exactly, doing this kind of in one take, a little bit of a different format, but coming to you from South Bend, Indiana, where I am competing in the Scrabble Players Championship. Just wanted to give you guys an update of how things are going. So we're about halfway through the event. Um, technically, the event is 31 games, but if you aspire to make the best of five finals, you have to be in the top two spots after 28 games. So we are 14 games through. That's halfway for the purposes of making the finals. So I am in seventh place right now. Um, that's good. I'm still in striking distance. I have made a lot more unforced errors than I'm used to. So I guess I should be grateful that I'm close. Um, missing some stuff that I shouldn't. Um, you know that sort of thing it's just rust um i think more more than anything else but i do think my biggest issue so far has been time the clock i'm going a little too slow and that's manifesting itself in a lot of ways so uh, with 14 games um i think what i'm going to do is see how long it takes me to get through the breakdown of one game that i found particularly interesting and then maybe i'll show you a couple more cool positions after that so let's get into it right now all right, so this is gonna be a game that I actually played in round two very early on. Uh, I just think it had a lot of interesting decisions and it's something that, uh, it's a game that I'm thinking a lot about as I get into the second half of the tournament. Um, it was against a veteran player, Jacob Bergman, who um, is one of the lower seeds in the UK English division, but still easily good enough to take a game off of a strong player, as you're about to see. So um, in any case, he, uh, pay no attention to these four eyes right now, he exchanges uh, four tiles, and it's up to me to make the first move of the game and my rack is this so i weighed a lot of the options here um, actually i can i put them on screen for you so you can actually see i saw all of these options obeying this is a weird one i didn't consider that this was probably more likely than usual to get Jake to challenge this word. So that would have given me an extra five points, which would have made it clearly the best play. Um, bogey, also a good option, keeping IN together with this G on the board. Um, the issue is I thought that would often get blocked by parallel plays and putting this I here does make certain tiles hit even harder. So I opted for bingo. Unfortunately, I don't get extra 50 points for playing this word. I did this just to avoid making an easy scoring play, but uh, I think it's a little bit of a mistake. I should have played OB, OBing or bogey for sure here. So bingo, um, hitting the board. And uh, a really interesting play in response by Jake. You'll have to pardon me while I put his moves in. It's going to show up under my rack for a second. But um, this is uh, the situation. So he plays Resh. So um, the thing about that that's so interesting is using an S for a relatively low score. That is um, kind of a neon sign that he has another S and potentially three good tiles. He just didn't quite have a bingo here. So I'm keeping that play in mind for most of the next few plays, and I'm really concerned about the strength of Jacob's other three tiles. So with that in mind, I have improve on my rack, and it plays in two places. So there's no way I'm not playing a bingo here. I can play it here for 83, but it opens a ton of space on the board. It opens an E and a triple lane. Um, I'm really worried about a play like that. Um, or I can play Improver here, which is 14 fewer points, way, way fewer. So um, this would be a huge point sacrifice. And ultimately, I went with this point sacrifice play because you can just see after this, there's so little room for eight-letter words. You just have this I as a floating tile, and then maybe you get lucky and play down from the letters and bingos. Otherwise, there's no place for uh, eight letter words to fit. Whereas after improve, not only are there a million places, you can see the board is wide open. There's a triple, triple lane and seven letter words play pretty easily off of this I. So in any case, um, if you look at the simulation, it wants the higher scoring improve, but it's not by so, so many points. Um, it does suggest that Jake 
his average score on his next turn is 16 points higher after the more um, aggressive positioning of improve. So I'm okay with limiting his options here as I did with Improver. So anyway, we continue on. He plays Meow, a word that is near and dear to my heart as a cat owner. And then I have um, a two eyes and then RS, RRS, yeah, so this is my rack. So uh, I'm glad that I stopped myself um, from playing something like briaries. <laughs> so briary is an adjective, meaning you can, you know, ab abounding in briar. Oh, I also have the uh, definitions that I'll enable here. Um, so ultimately, no bingo is available for me here. So the question was, should I play where or rip? Um, I ended up playing rip here. I'm not really sure why where does get the four extra points. I think I was just a little bit um, concerned about um, opening a couple more tiles that were really easy to end bingos in RS. Uh, I guess Meows is already available, so it's not, not that bad. So maybe I should have played where here, but either way, Rip is reasonable, keeping maybe even better of a bingo leave. Jake responds quickly with Zag. Um, and here I have <laughs> Zerasia. Um, so this, I think, ultimately here, um, the options are bingoing for 76. This is the only spot where bingo plays with the bingo of Zerasia. Only spot for bingoing. If I'm worried about that, I can play Axe for 45. And the reason that I wouldn't do this, it goes back to Resh again. So I'm reading Resh as Jake's got another S. So playing something like Zerasia, which makes this huge S hook on the double word score right here, it's going to be so bad so much of the time. If he has a bingo, it's going to score well over 100 points um, with those extra points from Zerasia. Again, he's getting 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 30 extra points for any bingo. That's very likely to push it into the 100-point range. Uh, but ultimately, um, I just couldn't stomach leaving 31 points on the board here instead playing Axe. So I went with the bingo. Uh, I spent so long on this trying to suss it out when really what I should have done is fire it down pretty quickly, as you'll see later. Um, so Jake responds with cheese, which I'm taking as a win. 54 points, that is a lot. But I was expecting um, some possibilities of uh, much, much more. So um, I, I took that as... A, a big positive for me and now here's my next rack so i played kiff um so it leaves this this triple open i was considering crab in that spot for 45 but f f o v is nothing to write home about certainly a b o v at least offers a little more flexibility the a really helps that leave a lot um, so i played kiff it also gets three more points i think this is pretty uncontroversial and um, Jake taking the other spot by playing Craw. Um, so back to me, I have A, B, O, O, and U, V. So here, um, I'm still up solidly, and now I'm starting to realize after some of these tricky decisions, I spent a long time on Improver, trying to think about whether the point sacrifice was worth it, a very long time, and Zerasia, looking for any you know, rationale to not play it there, knowing with almost a certainty that Jacob has an S on his rack after Resh. And uh, I'm a little bit low on time here. So the options here are really down to mostly Bozo, which is 30 points, but it keeps UV on the rack and opens another triple with two blanks out or Vor for 24. And I did ultimately go with this move because uh, it gets rid of the VU combination on the rack, and um, it sets my B up somewhat nicely. If I can draw an A, there aren't too many consonants left that would play um, as a hook to AA the way that my B would do. So if I'm able to draw one of the A's, I will play Azo and a play with Ba for a very large uh, score. As a follow-up, all I need to do is just pick one of the four A's that are unseen. I go with Vor for that reason. Um, it actually it does pretty well in simulation. And here is the key turn. So Puel goes down for Jake, and I have Nut Job.
and another M. So I am up by 66 here. Jake has just taken a long time to play Pule for 21. Um, if you look around this board, um, it's not very good for playing bingos. HM does not take any hooks. Improvers is available. There's only one S unseen to me, and you would need very specific tiles to end in ST or SE or something like that. Other than that, it's going to be really difficult to get a bingo down. Um, and I'm just trying to think about what could he have when he plays Pule for 21 after thinking for a really long time. Um, so I'm reading him and his behavior as having a blank, at least one. Maybe he was looking for a bingo ending in F-U-L. He just played U-L in Pule. That could easily be possible. But here's the time thing I was talking about at the intro. So basically, I took so long on a lot of these moves that with almost half the game left to play, I'm down to something like nine minutes on my clock. Really, really bad time management on my part. But fortunately for me, you can see in the uh, available moves that I have, you, I've got a move in Junto scoring 40 points, and you can see it's 12, roughly 12 equity points, equity being combination of your, the score of your play and the value of your rack leave. Junto is a dominant play in this position on that basis. So it's by far the best equity play and I fired it down very fast. I was very grateful to have a play that seemed so obviously best here. But I'm scared because I feel like there's a better than usual chance that Jake will have one of the two blanks and Hopefully I can just dodge him having something through that F of Kif. Um, that's my hope, and that's a pretty good chance. The F is not a very good bingo tile, and in that position it's not the best, but there are plenty of U's and L's unseen to me, so maybe he could have handfuls and things like that. There's a lot of things that he could have. Um, but the best play here is really cool. So I did think briefly of what could I play through um, through this F, and actually it's not even in the top 10 plays. If I just remove one of these other plays, you'll see it sneak into the top 10. Font for only 21 points, leaving the really ugly looking B, J, and U. That is not a, a leave that you would normally want, but here's the thing about it in this position. So because I'm worried that Jake has potentially a blank, this font play, not only does it block off the F for triple triples, it also blocks the W, which if there is going to be a word in a w, with a W in it, a bingo that Jake may have, um, it's definitely going to hit hardest and be the worst for me if it goes across from the W to that lower right triple with which font blocks. It is possible for a word to end in a W, but it's way less likely. So font takes out all the big threats on the board, but it does one other thing, which I didn't notice. With that B, J, N, U leave, if I draw any of the seven E's or four I's that you see on the right side of your screen in the unseen tiles section, I will get B, U, N, J. And again, if I draw an E, that is a valid word in Collins and an I also a valid word. So my chance of getting a humongous, nearly 70 point follow-up play, I believe, what would this be if I played this? If I change my rack to an E, I would have, yeah, 69 points to play there. Nice. Um, so unfortunately, because I was low on time, I just used my instincts for this is a good equity play. I didn't think about this really cool option that not only blocks everything, but uh, uh, gives me a chance of a, of a big, big follow-up play. So I play Junto, and of course, um, Jake has tiled and two blanks, and he finds his only triple-triple of uplifted um, for 140. So I'm sitting there a bit shell-shocked, low on time. All of a sudden, I'm trailing in the game. Um, I am certainly still very much in the game, I find what I think is a pretty necessary play here of butene for 27, scoring the most that I can get, leaving CI. Um, that's 
you know, setting up, making a bunch more lanes. Um, there is now a, somewhat of a marginal lane here in this U. It's going to be very difficult to hit that U, um, but Butene, I think, has to be the play here. And uh, then Jake plays Da in the lower corner, and I have C I N N T. O T Y. So here I'm kind of happy with this draw. Um, the reason that I like it is I've drawn a Y, which is going to help me if I draw a seven ending in a Y. Now I'll actually play it. So the Y is kind of nice here if I'm able to draw something with it. And in fact, I have a nice play through um, the Z O right here. I play Ozonic for 34. That's already my highest equity play. Jake also challenges it, giving me five extra points on the play. And all of a sudden, I'm right back on the scoreboard. But uh, very quickly, my hopes are dashed. He plays outraise right here um, for 70. And that's pretty much effectively the end of the game. I had uh, Dainty with another D and uh, with a fair number of tiles still to play um, all almost all of them very good bingo tiles the problem is if i make a really small fishing play um, he's just going to outscore me somewhere or other and my eventual bingo won't matter too much so i didn't really have a great plan to win this game i did play dainty here for 41 it blocks the board really a lot um, but i felt that if i could somehow get a bingo to squeak through in some other spot on the board, maybe somehow um, a nine letter word through something. But again, I had very little time at this point, probably about a minute left on my clock. So I just couldn't come up with a reasonable winning sequence, a sequence I should say. So um, Jake playing teen. And then in the end game, um, I have nothing available as far as bingoing. Um, I play icy for 23. Jake playing Glop for nine, and then I go out with my only outplay of Welted, and that leads to a loss for me of 476 to 434. So yeah, um, that was a tough one. Uh, let's get this off the board. You guys don't need that, and probably the rack either. So um, this was really instructive. I'm thinking about this a lot. Yes, um, Junto was the top equity play. But yeah, if we just go back um, to that critical position here after Puel, um, this is really this is really it, right? Like the the key. If I had a little bit more time, I think I would have um, seen that uh, Junto, while a good play, it leaves me too vulnerable to the scenarios that can cost me this game, which actually happened. So um, anyway, I think this has been long enough. Um, so we'll, we'll end it here. Let me know if you guys like this format. It's a little bit more informal, less polished than my normal content. I might do the tiniest bit of editing right now um, before we get this out. So um, halfway through, again, um, I have high hopes. Hopefully I can play a little faster and get a little bit sharper. Maybe I wind up as one of the two players in the finals. Again, you can watch coverage of uh, my division as well as the NWL division of this event at twitch.tv Scrabble. Thanks for watching and uh, good luck to me as I continue on here. See ya.